TikTok is home to some really incredible recipes. So today I'm gonna to show you my favorite method for finding these recipes using the hashtag system on TikTok. Welcome back to TikTok's Tastiest where we find and recreate the very best recipes the app has to offer. And as always, there is no time to waste my friends. Now let's go. Here's my system for finding amazing recipes on TikTok. It's really simple. You just go to the search bar in the top right corner, whatever kind of vegetable, meat, protein, anything virtually that has to do with food that you like, you just type it in. So I just clicked on potato. Now over here in the top right corner, you just click the hashtags and I would just click the hashtag that has the most views. So right here on the top 6.8 billion potato hashtag. Now all these recipes you're seeing up here in the top nine are absolutely incredible. Today we're going to make these little bubble bubble pillow ones as well as these 15 hour potatoes that just look absolutely incredible. So I will just start by saying I have not tried these recipes before. We are going to make each one. We are going to recreate it to the T and then give it a rating zero to 10. And if it's great, it's great and if it's not then well it's gonna get a low score so the first of these two potato recipes is coming from poppy cooks and we are doing her 15 hour potatoes let's have a look at the video here moment oh my silence. gosh listen to that crunch a moment of silence indeed uh, oh god these look so good these are kind of like palm anna potatoes oh. a little bit different preparation okay so we take some potatoes mandolin cover in butter salt or she's using beef drippings we can use whatever we want Fat is what you need. Layer them up, press them down a little bit. Bake them till they're really soft. Press them overnight in the fridge. Okay, got it. The next day we are gonna, ooh, she uses a tape measure. That's very precise. Then she deep fries them to get that crisp. Oh my God, that looks so freaking good. Okay, let's get on this. So you can use virtually any fat you want for this, but if you really want a lot of flavor, here's what you do. Duck fat you can find in most stores these days, as well as beef fat. I think those would be my two best options for these potatoes. However, this here is butter that I cooked a steak in from one of my previous videos. It is full of flavor, so I'm just gonna use this. You might want to make these and not get the duck fat. It is expensive to buy. Just use butter. That will be your next best bet. You know, for most potato recipes, I'm almost always choosing russet potatoes. It seems like they always just work out better, but if you wanted to try Yukon Golds, that would work as well. So all I'm going to do here is peel my potatoes. And if you're doing this with kids or something, or even for you, it can be really easy just to stick a fork in your potato and just peel like this. You don't have to worry about cutting your hands ever. And then all you, wow, that actually works so good, right? And then you can just do the top, pull out the fork and just do where you had the fork in. And I like to just leave them in water while I'm not working with them so they don't turn brown and oxidize. Now these peels honestly make the most amazing snack you will ever have. I have a full video on that if you wanna try it out. With my potato here, I'm just gonna square it up so it fits in the pan better. And with these little leftover pieces, I'll cook them in some hot salted water and then fry them in a pan. I'll have some breakfast potatoes. All right, so we're gonna use the old mandolin here. When you're using these, always do a couple test slices first. Make sure it's the right thickness. And to me, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna go a tiny bit thinner and we're good to go. Just be careful when you're using these. The guard is always a good choice. And then we'll just drop our potatoes into a bowl. All we need to do is melt down some of our fat. I'll put the full recipe in the description, just a couple tablespoons of each. Let's just pour some of our fat over the potatoes and save a little in the pan. I'll show you what that's for in a minute. And then we're just gonna season these up nicely and just mix them all in. Make sure you break these potatoes apart so they all have a little bit of that fat on them. Now I'm gonna take a brush with some of my reserved fat and I'm just gonna brush the inside of this loaf pan. And then I'm just gonna line this with parchment paper, a little more butter. Take another piece for the sides. And then it's as simple as just laying your potatoes into this pan, overlapping them, making sure you get them to the edges there. And just repeat that process with all of your potatoes. And as you're putting these in here, just press it down with your hand to make sure it's all nicely compact. Okay, so I've gone about halfway up with my potatoes. I'm just taking a little piece of parchment now and just setting it over the top. You could stack these up even further, but I think this is gonna be a really nice bite to fit into the mouth. And now I'm taking another same size loaf pan just to compress this down nicely. A good bit of pressure and that should be fine. Into a 250 degrees Fahrenheit oven for two and a half to three hours. We will test them. I'll show you how to do that soon. The best way you can test them is just to take something thin like this, a toothpick, thermometer, whatever, a thin piece of metal, even a knife, and just poke it in. If it goes in softly like butter, then it is done. These are definitely cooked. Gonna let this cool down for 30, 40 minutes before putting some weight on it and putting it in the fridge. Now we just set the same size loaf pan on top and we wanna put some weight in there. I'm just using these 
coconut milk cans. That should be good. This is gonna go into the fridge overnight to press. Okay, here we go. These things have been pressing overnight, probably about 10, 12 hours now. I'm just having a peek. Oh yeah, oh, they're compact, they're hard. This is what we want. Here we go, because of the way I did that parchment, it should be just so easy to grab them out. Oh, this is exciting. Oh. God, that duck fat smells so freaking good. And I'm just gonna trim away some of these little crispy edges. And now we simply just slice into these nice rectangle pieces like so. Not measuring mine, but you can if you want. Okay, here we go. I have peanut oil at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and we're just dropping in our potatoes. I'm gonna pop them out now. Now, right when these come out, I'm hitting them with a little bit of Malden salt. Oh, they're crispy, all right. Well, needless to say, I'm pretty excited. This is my breakfast today. Mm. Oh my God, with the duck fat and the butter steak fat, that's probably one of the best bites of potato I've ever had. That's insane. Oh Lord. Oh. This potato recipe is freaking amazing. I'm gonna give it a 9.2 out of 10. Definitely you should make this if you have the time. It is, I was gonna say stupendous. Stupendous? It's, inc it's incredible. The next recipe we have is coming from Mrs. She and Mr. He. I love them. She has the sweetest voice in the world. So we start by boiling some potatoes, shocking them in ice water. Not sure I'm gonna do that, but that's how she peels them. Then she runs them through a garlic press. We'll probably use a ricer for that. And then she adds in rice flour, cornstarch or potato starch, pretty simple ingredients, salt and pepper, kneads the dough, rolls it out kind of like you would with gnocchi, I guess. Cuts them up, then she forks them for a little bit of texture there, and then deep fries them twice, once at a lower temperature, and then once at a higher temperature. And then I guess you can just dust them with whatever seasoning you like. These look awesome, let's go for it. We're gonna start as she instructed by just scoring a circle around this whole potato, like so. We're just gonna drop our potatoes in water and bring this to a boil. My potatoes have been cooking for about 40 minutes. You wanna just cook them till they're soft. A good way to tell is just to stick a little metal skewer in there. This is just a thermometer. If it goes in nice and easily, it is fork tender, meaning it is done. We're shocking them in ice water, which I was trained not to do, but since these potatoes have skins on them and we're just trying to peel those skins off, I think it will be okay as long as they don't stay in here too long. I'll leave them in here for maybe 30 seconds to a minute. Pulling those potatoes out, 30 seconds seem like plenty of time to meet. Take both sides here, pull off those skins. They'll come right off nice and easily like that. I'm just using a ricer here. This is my preferred tool. In the video, she uses a garlic press, so you can do that if you don't have one of these. I'll throw in a whole potato, and then we'll just push that through. I'm gonna measure out 300 grams of this potato, about 300 grams which is 10 and a half ounces. We're adding the two tablespoons of glutinous rice flour. Although, if you do not have this, just use cornstarch instead, which is the next item. One tablespoon cornstarch. We'll just add our salt and then white pepper as well, much or as little as you like. I'll go for about a half a teaspoon to a teaspoon as per the TikTok recipe. All we need to do is mix this all up nicely. And we're just gonna bring this little kind of dough together. Here, I've just brought it together and we have this kind of smooth dough. I'm gonna take half of it, just begin rolling it out, kind of like you would do with gnocchi. I just put a little plastic wrap down. My dough seems like a, maybe a tiny bit drier than hers, I would say. This is really gonna help and I'll just fold that over and then I can really work it with my hands like this without worrying about it breaking too much, just like that. We're just gonna cut it into little individual pieces, just like this. We're gonna take a little fork and just press into these little pillowy, delicious potato bites, just to give it a little more texture as she did in the TikTok. Here I have my peanut oil at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna double fry these, much like you would do with French fries, first at a lower temperature. Well, guys, I followed the recipe exactly to the gram, and it looks like TikTok's most popular potato recipe. <laughs> He's a fail. I don't know. I used Yukon Golds instead of Russet, but I can't see how that would make a huge difference. But those, that is a 100% fail. Okay, my friends, we're trying this again. I have a plan on how to fix this recipe. I think it's gonna work, so hear me out. Measuring out 300 grams of potatoes once again. And this time I'm gonna go all cow and starch because it's a little bit finer and I feel like it's just gonna work the dough together easier. In again with the salt and the white pepper. So what I'm doing, trying to fix this, is obviously all cornstarch and then two egg yolks. And that should hopefully really help bring this dough together. So we'll do the same process of just kneading it into a smooth kind of doughy paste. The dough 
now is nicely together, but it's just slightly sticky. So what I did is just threw another tablespoon of cornstarch down and I'm just gonna kind of knead it here until it's just a little bit sticky to the touch, but not really, really sticky. So it sticks to your hand so much. Yeah, now this feels much, much better. So I will put the fixed recipe in the description exactly as I'm doing it right now. If anybody wants to try this, Although, I don't even know if this is gonna work. Now I'm rolling it out again, like gnocchi. This is very similar to gnocchi, except there's no regular flour. We're gonna go ahead and cut them into that same shape. Same deal now, I'm just smashing them down with this little fork and just shovel up all our little potato rectangles. I'm frying these again. We're doing the double fry method, but at 275 for the first one this time. I'm starting at 275 this time because putting all those potatoes in is definitely gonna drop the temperature of the oil down to about 250, which is where we actually wanna fry at. All right, here we go. That has been four and a half minutes for the first First fry. Now I'm just gonna remove them onto some paper towel. As you can see, they're definitely working out. One more thing I'm gonna try is just to freeze these for half an hour to an hour before frying them that second time. It should help a little bit with the crispiness. These have been in the freezer for about 45 minutes. They're basically completely frozen. I'm gonna go ahead and fry them the second time now. I've got the oil here at 375 degrees. I'll put these in, it'll drop down to about 350. Now I just fried those for a minute. They fried up really quick. Just getting them out onto some paper towel. The good news about this potato dish is you can just dust them with whatever spice you want at the end. Here I have some barbecue rub, some tandoori rub, and some smoked paprika. Barbecue rub, some of that tandoori rub, and then some paprika over here. Okay, let's give one of these a shot. Mmm, so they taste good, but they are not crunchy and crispy, which is what we wanted. I don't know if it's the glutinous rice flour or the fact that I use Yukon Gold potatoes, but I would rate this recipe maybe like 5.5 out of 10. It's really not gonna be high up on my scoring board. But again, it tastes good, and if you wanna try it, you can, but there are much better potato recipes out there like the first one we tried. Thank you for joining me again today, my friend. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something. I hope you're ready to cook some potato recipes of your own. And as always, drop a like, leave a comment if you so wish, and turn on notifications if you wanna be a psycho, and we love our psycho. And until next time, my sweet, sweet friends, <coughs> you know I love you in the mouth.